Hi, I'm going to be talking to you about Fragments of Him, where we align commercial entertainment, education and social impact. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Professor Matta haggis Burridge, and I work at Brady University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. I have a background as a video game and narrative designer, and I still work in collaboration with the commercial video game industry. I've been doing this overall for around 20 years now, working on some really big budget titles as well as some smaller indie titles. And I'll be talking to you about one of those smaller titles today. I do consultancy through a company called copperstonec.com. It's a way of uh, getting to uh, reach to the industry in a way that they understand as a consultancy alongside the educational work I do. But I also have various other affiliations with the Writers Guild, Society of Authors, and I'm an external expert for the Creative Europe Media Program. I was a creative director and writer on Fragments of Him, and I made the game in collaboration with Sassybot. So let's look at the contextual challenge. I work in the video game development education field. Uh, I train other people to make video games. There's been some long-standing issues in our education surrounding the inclusion of pro-social themes and ethical content into the curriculum there. Fragments of Him as a game, as a story that it creates, directly addresses themes of sexuality, coming out, grief, and to some extent also generational differences in the perception of um, our rights as individuals. We needed an example, um, and I needed an example, particularly in my teaching, to stimulate discussion, including representation of women and minorities in games. Furthermore, making this game pushed forward discuss discussion of interface design, storytelling, and the commercial challenges and opportunities for artistic games, particularly also in regard to governmental funding and how research can be done and how grants could be uh, spent to create impact. So a bit more about the game itself. It's a commercial video game. It was released on Xbox and PC in uh, 2016 and on PlayStation 4 in 2017. Its story is inspired by real events in my life. It is through a fictional lens, but there are real elements in there. Uh, and also by challenges I met in my teaching. I lacked good examples to use in my classes. It's a game uh, very much story driven about a young man who dies in an accident and how his friends and family came to terms with that loss. It has a very simple mecha mechanics in it. The player walks around detailed environments. You can see an example on the screen here, clicking on highlighted objects. Um, so clicking on an object, it causes a character to appear, interact with the object and the story to advance. It's almost a bit like being on stage with actors and kind of going, okay, do the next line now, do that bit over there. And the actor appears and does the interaction with that particular item. So alongside this, there are no puzzles, no timers or challenges. It's very ungame-like in a way. It's much more about following a story and going on this linear path without branching, without options. The game is somber and quite serious in its tone, and it's mostly monochrome, uh, partly to kind of keep the uh, complexity of the art production down, but also because we felt a monochrome treatment really did help the game in the tone it was trying to create. Of course, like I say, this is a you know, based on real world kind of experience here and you cannot save the young man will. This is not a game where you can rewind time or defeat an evil villain or anything like that. This is a game about life and sometimes terrible things happen. Life is um, one of those things when death is permanent. That is part of this, you know, part of our learning to accept that as part of growing up. We wanted to embed that into the way that the game was made. Here's a very quick uh, video to just show you one interaction. So you can see there's an item there that could be clicked on. A little bit too far away, let's move a bit closer. It turns yellow, now it could be clicked on. I need to take the time to look at what's right in front of me. So the character has appeared, said a line of dialogue explaining what's going through his thoughts at that moment. And then if we follow him down the corridor there, we have some new options or things to click on and it would reveal the next part of the story. So we can walk around these spaces freely and have a look at the world and then choose when we're ready for the story to continue. So as I, like I say, this game is very story focused. We have four characters, Will, a young bisexual man who dies in an accident, Harry, who's Will's partner at the time of the accident, Sarah, who's Will's ex-girlfriend from a time at university, we see how they could have got together at the end of their relationship. And Mary, who's Will's grandmother, they have some differences, she's not very comfortable with him being bisexual. But we also see how they come to terms with that and how love overcomes the difficulties in the end. 
each of these characters have a, has their own link to Will, their own memories of him and their own personality, which we really worked hard to bring forward in the game. So of course, we use this in teaching. Typically, the game is either played by students before a class and then used as a discussion point, thinking about how, it, how they could tell their own stories using similar mechanics, similar storytelling tools, or sometimes it's played live for discussion with the class. I might, for example, do a, bit, a guest lecture where I turn up and I play the game with people. We talk about the decisions, the background processes about why the, the story was told this way, why the design was, was done in particular ways. And that really gives people a deep insight into game development. Or sometimes it's shown in videos as examples of design and storytelling choices. Particularly often if I'm talking about diversity and representation of diversity, it's really nice to be able to kind of show, here's how we tackled that moment, here's how we showed that in our game. Of course, beyond just the game itself, there's all this documentation, other supporting materials that are used to make the game. And these are being used as exemplars for teaching various game development processes. In fact, we're hoping to uh, distribute some of them through the Writers Guild of Great Britain to make them available across the world as people to people as an example of how a game can be written. It's used as a launching point for discussions and debates regarding diversity in game development as well. We've really found this quite a useful way of doing this. In terms of impact, uh, Fragments of Film has been featured in my teaching and lectures at my own academy, but also it's been taught uh, part of a curriculum in Norway, California, Sao Paulo, and probably more that I don't know about. As a representation of diversity in games, it was received overall very positively. There were some critics, as there always will be whenever you have hot topics like this, but overall a very positive reception to this. It proved the worth of storytelling structures and ethical game development and it added weight to the lessons that I teach on these topics and really gave me a way of saying, I know this for sure, I've done this myself, I've been through this process, which really made the lessons we teach on this much more impactful. Also, it allowed my academy to really directly include discussion and diversity into the curriculum, resulting in many students feeling acknowledged for the first time. So we could talk about sexuality, we could talk about difficult emotions and growing up and challenges we feel really directly with a game as a centre point that allows us to push those discussions forward. On a broader societal level, customers who purchased the game have responded very warmly to the handling of love, grief and friendship. This has been played by thousands of people all over the world. And we've had some really heartwarming messages from people about this. I've used it as an illustration and talking point in over a dozen conferences and online videos, probably dozens more online videos. We've reached well over 200,000 people talking with these um, through these mediums online and at conferences. It also received industry media coverage very positively from the very uh, prominent website called Polygon, uh, where they really talked about how the game helped actually one of their writers deal with grief and cope with a very uh, significant loss they'd had just before playing the game. It also gave the, the, the small business, Sassybot, sufficient income to fund the development of their next game, which of course is a very nice piece of societal impact in itself. It received awards and many nominations, uh, including from South by Southwest in America and the Writers Guild of Great Britain. And even video game critics were overall positive about its experimental approach. This is quite unusual to, for, for game uh, developers and game journalists to really see something quite as strange as this, quite as unusual in its approach as this, and be quite so warm and positive about it. So we're very happy with where they went with that. So in conclusion, Fragments of Him was, it was a commercial project, but it was also closely linked to the educational needs of our curriculum at Brady University of Applied Sciences. It reached students around the world, built our network, and really created a great way of talking about these things and connecting to other universities. Professional standard games are difficult and expensive to make. They are not cheap or easy to make, but I think the impact reflects the investment. If we were to count up the, the, the people hours used to make this game, it probably would have been over 200,000, maybe 250,000 euros in budget. It's quite a significant investment, but I do think that the impact that we had and the, the power that I felt in using this in the curriculum was really worth that kind of time. Um, we managed to make it for less in terms of cash now because it was a very small business, but if you were wanting to make something like this, it does take a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of expertise. So um, we do have to think about the budgets that are assigned for these on educational properties and educational grants. The game combined private business, research, and educational needs, and I hope you find that this was an interesting uh, way of uh, 
doing that to create something worthwhile. And it has reached thousands of players and viewers all over the world, including yourselves now. Thank you very much for listening to this talk about Fragments of Him, where we align commercial entertainment, education and social impact. My name is Professor Matta Haggis Burridge. You can email me haggis.m at buras.nl if you wish, or find me on Twitter at Matta Haggis. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks.